Okay, so in our last video, we talked a little bit about our confidence intervals and bounds, and we introduced this idea of saying that, okay, so we've got our sample mean, and then we want to go plus or minus somewhat. We want to have this range where we can say, hey, we are we're confident that, that we have captured the true population uh, parameter, in this case, the true population mean. Okay, so let's, uh, let's add a little bit onto this equation. So what this really is, is let's expand it out. So this is really saying the confidence interval, and usually we do a little subscript. We'll do like 0.95 for this guy, or it's your confidence level. Uh, so instead of doing 0.95, we'll just do confidence level. Give me just a second, and here we go. Okay. So we've got, and I'm going to shorten it down to confidence level. We'll have this be confidence level. Okay, so confidence interval at a specified confidence level. We could do 95, we could do 85. It just has to be between, technically, between 0 and 1, just like our probabilities. Um, most of the time, they're, uh, they're like 80% and above. So there are some special cases where, where they're lower. Okay, but we'll go ahead and say confidence interval is at a specific confidence level is equal to x bar, the sample proportion. Okay, so now we need to do plus or minus. Now we need to figure out how do we calculate out this margin of error. All right, so the margin of error, here's how, how we get it. It is formed by z. We've done z scores before, so this isn't too crazy. And then we're going to do alpha divided by 2. Right, I'm going to explain what this is in just a second, so just hold on. And then we're going to multiply z by, we're going to do sigma, uh, okay, hold on. So there's, there's two ways that, that we can do this. We can do this either sigma divided by the square root of n. So if we happen to know what the population standard deviation is, it's possible that that would do. This would be the format for our calculation, uh, where we'd use the z-score and then we'd use the, stand, the standard deviation. Now, like I said, a lot of times we don't know what the population parameters are. If we don't know what the population parameters are, we are in luck uh, because we, there are a few other, that there's another method that, that we can use and we actually get to use a new distribution. It's very similar to the normal distribution, uh, but it is modified because that we are using, instead of the population standard deviation, we are using the sample standard deviation. Okay, so here, if we don't know what sigma is, we can do confidence interval, still confidence level. Hey, we're still at X bar. Okay, but plus or minus, now this time we're going to do a T score. So it's called it's a studentized T. It's just a different distribution. Thankfully, it's really easy to use within R Commander. We are still going to do alpha divided by two, but now we need what's called also the degrees of freedom. And then we multiply by S, the sample standard deviation, divided by the square root of N. Okay, so now that we now we have our equations that are going to tell us actually uh, how do we calculate out our confidence interval. This one is if we know what the population standard deviation is. This is the one where if we don't know what the population standard deviation is, this new equation down here is our most useful. Okay, but the the concepts are are basically the same. So if we look at, at this z-score, let's come up here, and let's draw a distribution, okay? So let's assume that we center this distribution at x bar. And we want to go plus or minus a number, remember z-score is the number of standard deviations away from the mean. So we want to go plus and minus something. So let's let's do this 0.95. If you remember from our empirical rules, that is basically plus or minus two standard deviations. Okay, so like if we put in, like sometimes we simplify and we put in the number two, uh, but we can actually calculate this out from our 
uh, our R commander. And I'll show you that in the software videos in a little bit. But what does this alpha divided by 2 mean? We've got to figure this out. Well, how do we figure out alpha? Alpha is actually really easy to figure out. And this is true for both cases. Alpha equals 1 minus your confidence level. So our confidence level here is 95%. So for us, we're going to say that alpha equals 0 0.05. Okay, so now we know it's 0 0.05. We're like, okay, 0 0.05 divided by 2. Why? Okay, so it's wanting to you to know where are the um, where are the critical values uh, if we were to look at quantiles. Okay, so remember, if you look at quantiles, you give our commander a, a probability and it gives you a critical value. Okay, well, what this is saying when we do alpha divided by two is we're doing this two-tailed test where this little area right over here is alpha divided by two and this guy is alpha divided by two. It's letting us know where our critical points are and this tells us the associated critical Z value for those alphas. And even, even more generally, like what is alpha? Alpha is equal to the percent of time we are willing, willing to be wrong. So remember, when we do statistics, sometimes we're wrong. And what we're saying is that if we were to, so, so with this confidence level of 95%, we'd basically be saying that if we were to perform this confidence interval or this test 100 times, if we were to go out and sample you know, cows 100 times or, or whatever, whatever we're interested in, that 95% of the time, the confidence interval that we calculated would capture the true population mean. But 5% of the time, the population mean will be outside of our range, either above or, well, I guess above's over here, or below. So alpha is just the percent of the time that we're willing to be wrong. Now you might say like, oh, I want to be right all the time. The problem is, is that if you do that, the, your confidence interval stretches out so wide that it's useless. It's kind of like saying, I can be 100% right about the weather tomorrow. I can say that it's going to be either raining or not raining. And does that help you know if you, if you should take an umbrella tomorrow? And the answer is no. So we give things like confidence intervals, like you know we're 75% confident that you know it's going to rain tomorrow, plus or minus 5%, or, or something along those lines. And so coming back to back to this, the alpha lets us know that okay, we're going to alpha divided by two. Let's know that we're separating our error to the top and bottom of our confidence interval. That lets us know what this z score is, and we have to use our software tools to calculate this z. Sigma, if it's given to us from the population, we just plug it in, divided by the square root of n, and we just do plus or minus this margin of error from the, our sample mean, or our best point estimate. And it's exactly the same down here. The only difference is, is now we have a t distribution. And with a t distribution, we have to take into account the degrees of freedom. I am running out of room, but I've got enough room right here. So we've got degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom, which is equal to n minus 1. Since we're using a sample standard deviation just to adjust it correctly, we have to take our degrees of freedom as n minus 1. And I'll show you how to, how to use those tools and calculate out the t value, but the principle is the same. We are going to go so many standard deviations away from the mean and that's going to be our confidence interval so that we can say that we are 95% confident that the true population mean is contained within these bounds.